Picture a frozen world where the mighty woolly mammoth roams. This isn't something in the past, this is something that's coming up in the future. That's right, in this video, I'm going to break down the woolly mammoth de-extinction, how Colossal Biosciences plans to bring it back, and how that technology is actually going to save modern day elephants and even help combat climate change. Let's get into it. The woolly mammoth was pretty much a huge hairy elephant that roamed parts of Asia, Europe, and North America. It was cold resistant, meaning it's a warm blooded creature that can survive in freezing temperatures. It was large and slow moving with short compact ears to prevent heat loss, insulated by two layers of thick fur to keep its blood warm. The mammoth lineage is said to have branched from the Asian elephant around 6 million years ago. And get this, they share 99.6% of their DNA. The main distinguishing feature of the mammoth that everyone is familiar with is its huge, inward curling tusks. Get this, scientists can age mammoths based on the number of rings present in a cross-section view of the tusk, even down to the number of weeks and days, which is insane. That's better off than when you look into the core of a tree. And that's not all. You can even tell what the weather was like when the animal died. We typically think of mammoths as prehistoric creatures, but in reality, they lived up until about 4,000 years ago, a relatively short period of time in biological and geological terms. We know for a fact that humans and mammoths lived together, and perhaps that humans relied on the mammoths as part of their equation for survival. It's also pretty well known that humans had a hand in the eventual extinction of this huge animal. We pretty much harvested mammoths as a source of protein, which we needed to eat, use their skins for warmth and their fur, use their tusks for art and a form of currency, and use their bones and tusks as building aids, which helped contribute to their eventual extinction. Along with humans, natural climate changes caused a rapid shrinking of the mammoth's available living habitat spaces. The animal was basically being geologically sequestered by the earth, forced to live in tighter areas of land. This caused the genetic pool to shrink, and what comes with that? Yep interbreeding. Eventually, the planet's mammoth population was reduced to two small communes of about 500 to 1,000 each, one on St. Paul Island just off the southwest coast of Alaska, and the other is Wrangell Island off the northeast tip of Russia. These mammoths lived for over 200 generations before going extinct. So why? Why bring back woolly mammoths? That's the big question that I always get asked, right? And the answer is complicated, but if you break it down, it's digestible. Well, its massive size, thunderous gait, and vast migration patterns helped keep the mammoth steppe ecosystem healthy. They played a big role in maintaining an ecosystem so vast that it affected, if not almost controlled, the climate. Estimates suggest that due to the mammoth's extinction, the total mass of plants and animals in Siberia's tundra is now a hundredfold less than what it was before. That's just nuts. In the Arctic tundra, it didn't used to look the way it does today. It didn't used to be covered in forest and moss and trees. It used to be similar to an African savanna. And the reason being, the woolly mammoth, when present there, would knock over trees and stomp down the ice and make these vast grassy icelands. Now, these grassy savannas were incredible at combating rising temperatures because by crushing that ice and not having trees which act as big insulators, think like an igloo when snow goes over a tree, you have a colder Arctic. A colder Arctic slows down the melting of the permafrost, under which is trapped millions and millions of tons of old vegetation, which equals carbon when that ice is melted and enters into the ecosystem. So by adding mammoths back into the Arctic, the mammoths come along, they crush down the snowpack and the ice, they knock over the trees, and they shape the ecosystem to be a colder, more savanna-like ecosystem, which allows the Arctic to stay colder. And when the Arctic's colder, our whole planet, our whole atmosphere stays cooler, which has less fluctuations in temperature combating global climate change. So mammoths are not just ecosystem engineers for the Arctic. In sense, mammoths can be ecosystem engineers for the whole planet and help offset carbon emissions and keep the earth cooler, acting like a refrigerator altogether so that these unbelievable heated summers that we're having, these crazy changing sea surface temperatures, all of this stuff that we're seeing as the world gets hotter can slow down and animals and people can have more time to adapt. So 
The big question when I talk about the de-extinction of the woolly mammoth is when are we going to get to see a mammoth? We'll expect the first mammoth calves to be born in 2028. And boom, this will mark the resurrection of the woolly mammoth, or more specifically, a cold-resistant elephant with all of the core biological traits of the woolly mammoth. It will walk, look, and sound like a woolly mammoth, and most importantly, it will be able to inhabit the same ecological niche mammoths once occupied before they went extinct and help with ecosystem revival. Reviving the mammoth has five core goals. Increase habitat resilience to climate change. Develop tools to save modern elephants from extinction. Understand how animals adapt to cold. Advance genome editing techniques. And prove we can bring back an extinct species. Mammoths have been found remarkably well preserved over thousands of years. Many mammoths that died didn't decay completely. Instead, they stayed frozen in ice until they were found later on. All of the tissue samples collected by Colossal contain intact DNA and even undigested food in mammoth stomachs because they were preserved so well. It's basically the same thing as if you died in a freezer and then somebody found you a thousand years later, you'd still pretty much be exactly the same, just completely frozen with all of your internal food and everything else still intact. And that's why we're able to get such incredibly intact DNA. Now, it's not just the mammoth that will benefit. The pioneering technology that will be developed to bring back the mammoth will also help save elephants. It's no secret that elephant populations around the globe are endangered. Whether that be from factors such as poaching, the illegal wildlife trade, or human conflict, their preservation is vital, as they are considered a keystone species. There are three main species of elephant, the African forest elephant, African savanna elephant, and the Asian or Indian elephant. The latter two are both endangered, and the African forest elephant is critically endangered. These species play crucial roles in maintaining biodiversity within their ecosystems, and if we lose them, we risk triggering trophic cascades and widespread environmental destruction. But through making the mammoth the biggest benefit comes to these very elephant species. As a young kid growing up in Zimbabwe, I was surrounded by Ellie's as we used to call them. And to me, they were absolutely one of my favorite animals. They're a creature that is so mighty and so grand and so much larger than life that when you see them and their impacts on the ecosystem and how the rest of the animals around them respect them, you get such an incredible sense of your place in the food chain. And something equally as incredible is Colossal is working towards developing a vaccine to save elephants from a deadly herpes virus. Elephant endotheliotrophic herpes virus, or EHV, pretty much causes a highly fatal hemorrhagic disease primarily affecting young elephants. This virus is the leading killer of Asian elephant calves in captivity and a significant threat to wild populations. And get this, the first elephant vaccination was just administered at the Houston Zoo. How awesome is that? Dr. Paul Ling from Baylor College of Medicine has been working on this since 2009 with the Houston Zoo. And with colossal support, they finally made it happen. Colossal helped fund and research this mRNA vaccine for EHV. Colossal's advanced technology and AI sequencing of the Asian elephant genome provided vital data for the vaccine's development. This is a huge step forward in elephant conservation, and the fact that we'll one day get to see this arctic version of the elephant come back yet again and contribute to combating intense permafrost melting and help with the carbon offset is such an incredible thing. It's, it's a twofold success. It's more than twofold. It's like a tenfold success, but it's a twofold success from a selfish standpoint because you get to see these incredible creatures and know that we're righting the wrongs of humans past and putting them back in the ecosystem to help maintain a colder planet that helps all of us in return. It's amazing to see that with all the technology Colossal is developing to bring back the mammoths, we can also save the current species that are left on Earth. And boy, I just cannot wait for 2028 when the first mammoth calf will be born. Tune in for next video in this series next month where I'll be talking about my favorite extinct animal, the thylacine. Like, follow, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys soon.